I'm going to hit the record button. Now we got to start. <laughs> oh, no, boy. No, that's funny. All right, guys. Hey, how's it going? Welcome again. Yeah. So, yesterday we made this super enticing, spicy video where we talked about how we're going to talk about these taboo subjects on Facebook. And honestly, like, this was our number one. Well, let's be real, like that video was there because I was super nervous and was afraid that all of you would unfriend me and like not want to have anything to do with me because I was raised as a Catholic schoolgirl. So I'm like super duper aware of mm -hmm. other people's opinions about sex because it was my big, my big super huge right. hang up. Whereas it was never a huge hang up for me because, I mean, my mom literally took my two sisters to the sex museum in Amsterdam when they were still minors and was like, and that's that, and this is this. And that's a vagina, and she has nipple... Whatevers. Nipple piercings or whatever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this video is all about sexual self-acceptance. And what the hell does that even mean? Well, sexual self-acceptance is well we were kind of just talking about it because you know for me i've had the sexual hang-ups of like oh no people can't talk about sex it's, it's that's a naughty thing to talk about and yeah. for you you were raised in a society or a family where they weren't really feeling awkward right. about we it. didn't feel awkward about it at all so we're going to talk about it today so if you are turned off by sex and i'm pretty sure most people are turned on by sex whether or not they want to admit it it piques your curiosity. Piques your curiosity, sure. you at least. Click on this video. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, something that I've realized, you know, being married to my wife, and a little backstory on me. I was a virgin when we got married. I made that commitment when I was like really young, and then I stuck with it because I said to myself, "Sex is worth waiting for." Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was a super not virgin. Let's just be real here. <laughs> yeah. So we have the whole gamut here of sexual experience. But even though we came from these really diverse backgrounds, there's been this one unifying thing. And that is that both of us were very, very ashamed of our most secret sexual desires, which are very different. And neither one of us think that the other person's desires are particularly unusual. We judge the shit out of ourselves. But she sure. doesn't judge me and I don't judge her. Well, I had to cultivate that acceptance. Right. I had to cultivate the acceptance too. But it was a choice. Right. It was a choice and it was a choice made with love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted you to learn how to accept yourself too. You know, mm -hmm. So by embracing you, I, I built you up. Right. And, and by embracing me, she normalized what I thought was terrible. And that no one could ever love. And that nobody could ever love me. Yeah. Oh my God. Sexual self-acceptance is such a huge one because so many of us feel so awkward about what we really like and what we're really into. You know, mm -hmm. I know people who now are just recently finding out that they are transgendered and they are having to break that to their significant others that, that they want to like dress like a woman and like be a woman in bed instead of a man. And it's just like, you know, all of the shame that goes around that is so huge and it affects every single part of our lives. It affects our creativity, it affects how much we feel like we can share ourselves with the world, it affects uh, how we show up in life, you know, these other components of money and power and, you know, the worldly, the worldly place out there, mm -hmm. you know, beyond just inside of your home, it, it affects so much. And, and so when you feel sexually ashamed of yourself, uh, or like you feel like you're a pervert, or like you feel like you're weird or strange for what you like, and um, mm -hmm and you're judging the shit out of yourself, like it, it totally drags your energy down and it makes it so hard for the world to receive you. It does. And it makes you, it makes it very hard for you to show up as your true self because you believe that if you have to hide this one part of yourself, then you have to hide other parts of yourself too. Maybe you have to hide who you are at work. Maybe you have to hide 
you know, what your taste in clothing is. It's it manifests itself in these huge ways that people don't even realize. And when we say we're talking about money, power, and sex, we're really talking about the same thing. It's all the same stuff. I've noticed that people who have really good sex also tend to have a lot of personal power, which reflects in their careers, which reflects in their marriages, which reflects in the way that their peers judge them. They also tend to have a lot of money. Because once again, people with a lot of power tend to have a bunch of money too. Because it's all connected. Right. And the really, really secret part that we were wanting to like, kind of just be like, whoa, this is taboo, is that it's all tied to your spirituality. Mm -hmm. It's all tied to your relationship with God. Like that's the big giveaway, you know, that there's, it's no secret that Paul and I are intensely spiritual people. And both of us have actively cultivated our relationships with God. Yeah. And God is seriously the third strand of our relationship right. where we, before we even got together, we dedicated our relationship to the divine. We did. Like we held hands on the balcony in Costa Rica <laughs> and we're like, hey God, yeah. like, what is this? I have no <laughs> idea what this is, yeah. but it's yours. Right. And, you can have it. And that's what we did. And Because we knew we weren't strong enough by ourselves. Like if, I, if I'm looking inside of myself to, to have the strength to take care of her for the rest of my life, I don't have it. If or to accept me unconditionally to or accept to love her me unconditionally. Holy right. shit, that's hard, guys. It's I don't know if you've ever done that by your own strength, but like bless you because you're like Mother Teresa or something. <laughs> but I know that the only reason that I'm able to continually love him with my whole heart mm -hmm. and to continually show up and be authentic in my marriage and my relationship is because God empowers me to, and because I have a relationship with my own divine self, with my own, my own interpretation of what God is, you know? So I know all of the work I've done on myself over the years of really looking at my shit was what needed to happen in order for me to bring him into my world. And it was really what needed to happen for me to believe that someone like him was possible. So, cleaning up our sexual shame and cleaning up the, the, the lack of acceptance we have about ourselves is what brings healthy, strong, vibrant relationship into our world because we're no longer separate from God at that point. We no longer are keeping love out of our world. We're not keeping it separate from us. We're receiving it and letting it in. And you have to be able to let in God's love if you're going to be able to let in the love of a partner. It just, mm -hmm. it, that is just how it is. So you can't escape. Sorry, <laughs> you can't escape yourself because relationships are all about you and your relationship to you. I couldn't have him if I didn't have a good relationship with me. And that's what we want everybody who watches this video to have. We believe that it's possible. We believe that you can have that fairy tale existence. We have it. We experience it we daily. We have bliss every day. Every day. Every day we wake up and we pray and, and we we're so have grateful. sex and we're just like, <laughs> yeah. holy, li and then we pray again. Right, then we then pray again. <laughs> and then sometimes we have sex again. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, but it's so oh. beautiful because we have such creativity and we mm -hmm. have new ideas flowing into our world all the time. And right. we have just so much love that pours through us. And because it's pouring through us, we get to pour it out onto other people. Right. We have so much of it. We have something to give away. We get to pour away. it out onto you guys. Like right. we love you and, and we love you because we love us and mm -hmm. our sexual selves. Right. And we have claimed our own selves and there is no part of this that I don't love, right. that I haven't looked at, that I haven't been like, <laughs> Oh, what's, what's under there? Oh, no, I can't do it. Yeah, I've done it. I've done all that dirty work of looking under my skirt, you know, just like being in it. And it's liberating because when you can love all of this, you can love all of this. Right. Yeah. I had to love myself before I could love her because I found that everything that bothered me about her was really something that bothered me about me. Mm-hmm. It was really just me psychologically projecting and vomiting all over her, just like, Ugh, you're a horrible person, but really I'm just looking As at Mary mirror. Adams would say, flinging monkey shit. <laughs> yeah. Stop flinging your monkey shit at me. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, so much as I absolutely love to dig around in my own asshole and then, like, <laughs> throw shit at other people, I'm really just, like, hurling it at myself. Because it's my shit. It's me. And, and every time I'm angry with her, this is another thing. We don't have a serious fight that lasts more than about two minutes. Not anymore, no. Not yeah, anymore. We're, we're so quick at catching our bullshit and our psychological projections and our own fears. Mm -hmm. that we... Most of them are fear-based. Yeah. Like, anytime you start noticing that little bit of, like... like right. I had a little bit of one today. Just a tiny little bit. Oh, I want to tell the story. Yeah, you can, you can so, do that. So I'm looking around for a job today, and when I left the house this morning, I had absolutely no leads on anything. Nothing. I had nothing. <laughs> You, you had just started looking. I just like started looking. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yesterday. So big surprise, I got nothing. So, you know, I went over and I, I found like two really good job prospects. And then I was just talking to this random guy and he's like, I happen to need the skills that you possess. Do you have a business card? And I handed him a business card and he looked at it. And he's like, wow, that's a snazzy business card you have. And so I called Katharina to tell her about this, and she immediately, like, started worrying about, like, why didn't the day go well? And I'm thinking, I have three damn good job leads. What are you talking about? The day didn't go well. And I could have thought that that was about me and my inability to provide for her. But instead, I realized, I was like, wait, no, that's just, that's just her crack. And when, when, <laughs> when I came... My crack. When you're crack. My from, misery crack. You're her misery crack. Yeah, it was like... <laughs> Ooh, oh wait, that's wrong, wrong, the wrong drug. Wrong drug, yeah. <laughs> yeah, misery crack. Coke. <laughs> that's that's just her doing doing her crack. You can tell that we're not prolific drug users. We okay. don't entirely know how to do it. But anyways, that's when I came home. I said, "So are you coming down off the misery crack yet?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'm coming down." Because she recognized. Well, we recognize on the phone, but also, you know, right? Misery crack takes a little while to wear off. It sometimes. does. It does. So. I could have made the entire conversation about me and, and made a huge fight about it and been like, you dumb bitch, why don't you support me in like going out and... and I don't think you've ever called me a dumb bitch. Only on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe sometimes in my head. Aww. But hey, what can you do? Not anymore, though. Right on. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's... That could have easily happened. I could have been angry with her and, and allowed it to ruin the 30 or 40 minutes in the interim from the time that we had the call to the time that I got home. Mm -hmm. But instead I just said, oh, oh, no, she's psychologically projecting, which means she's afraid of something, which means when I come home, I'm going to have some compassion on her. And I did. And then I came right, up. Right, but you first had to have that awareness to, to, in order to... Right, and I had to have compassion on myself. Just to say to myself, you know what, Paul, you actually are doing a, a pretty fantastic job, like, going out there and rustling up work. You, you really are doing a fantastic job. You know, your wife has never, ever missed a meal, ever. And she has never slept outside, ever. And she has had indoor plumbing for your entire relationship. So, you know, you're doing good stuff. And it all comes back to sexual self-acceptance. Because if I didn't accept myself completely, then the door would be open for me to judge the living crap out of myself. Well, over the time of our relationship, you grew in that ability to be that, that take charge, like powerful man. I did. Uh, I remember when we were in Costa Rica, you were like, like this scrawny little waif of a man. <laughs> I was. Like, it was so funny because it was reflected in his physical body too, and just the way he held himself. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, he was just like hunched over and like, just like, like shrinking back, like just like crawling away from life. And, you know, before I met you, I think you had been sick for like a yeah. couple months. I, I was like 118 pounds. Yeah, he was sickly skinny, but like... Just, it was interesting to see how you had, over the period of our relationship, through your own sexual self-acceptance, because, you know, holy shit, have we had some sex capades since. <laughs> we sure have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have prolific amounts of incredible sex. <laughs> prolific amounts. They're, they, they write sexual encyclopedias, and we are just, like, featured in two-thirds of those pages. <laughs> yeah. He embellishes a little bit, but yeah, yeah that, that idea, right? Like we have really, really awesome sexual experiences and they've just gotten more awesome because we've used 
sex as a tool for growth. We have. And so we've used it as a way of bringing more consciousness to ourselves mm -hmm. of like being able to look at our own stuff. Right. Like whenever we're having the experience of something that is terrifying to us mm -hmm. or a new experience that is just like, like, oh my God, that's a little too kinky. Like, I don't know. Like, like, like this is Don't weird. know if we like, can do that. I don't know if we can do that. Like we have grown through it and the fear mm -hmm. and by doing that, it has allowed us to really learn how to have deeper acceptance for each other at all these other levels. Right. And I want to talk a bit for a minute about like personal power and how that reflects on the outside world. Because when you accept yourself and you are able to accept your spouse, you start to see other people differently. You start to see other people as being worthy of your love and acceptance too, which makes you uh, a person who is very easy to be a friend to, which allows you to influence other people, which is which allows you to lead them. That's that's why leaders end up in the roles that they do because they they love and accept the people around them. They build those people up because they understand that those people are going through the same shit. It's yeah, it's the empathy and the compassion. It's the empathy and the compassion, and it just builds it up. So start by having compassion for you and recognizing that whatever the thing is that you think is really dirty inside of you that you think that you shouldn't have and whether that, that thing part. is sexual or not whether you it's know, sexual it, it or not it doesn't have to be sexual but it, it most often is mm -hmm. because people don't have sexual desires they have sexual needs mm -hmm. and we judge the shit out of we our do needs. we judge the shit out of our needs so don't stop judging the shit out of your needs don't stop. No, no do please, stop. Do stop. Do stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop judging the shit out of your needs. <laughs> yeah. That's the takeaway here. And, and when that happens, slowly all kinds of other parts of your life are going to fall into a place that you would rather have them be from where they are right now. It's right. like your whole life just starts to fall into place. When you start being living in your fully accepted self, like when you start living from that place of being... Like, I don't know, they call it your higher self in some circles. But like when you're, you're living in that place of you're just being more integrated and you, and you accept all of you and you're whole, your life starts looking very different because right. no longer are you putting up with bullshit anymore. Like you're just, you're choosing from a different place inside of yourself. And so that part of you has different preferences. And then all, all of a sudden things just like start shifting out of the way and you're like, okay, well, all right, this is now what I'm doing. You know, right. I'm just on this track now. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy it's to make effortless. a change. It's effortless to make right. the changes because you just, th there's alignment. Yeah. And we, it's our, congruence. Our, it's congruence. And our lives are evidence. We didn't just magically end up in Maui. We decided to go. We decided that we're like, oh, it's time to make a change. And instead of clinging to the past, we just made the change. I just gave, I just put in my five weeks of notice because I'm a polite person who respects my employer. And we bought tickets and we went. <laughs> yeah. There's no, there was no hemming and hawing. There None. was no drama about it. It was just, all right. Yeah. And now we're here. And now we're here and we are equally as e at ease here as we were previously. So this video is like 18 minutes long. Love. It's all good. Yeah. I think it's time to, to stop it. If you are interested in joining the group that we're making, send us a private message. Send us a private message. Seriously. Like I know some of you have done it in the comments, but send us a private message because uh, we actually are going to be doing a payment thing for it. So we need to know you, how we can. Right. And we also kind of want to get to know info. you because this group is going to be like our, our intention for this group is that you have an incredible relationship and that the very moment the very moment, no matter how you choose to be involved with us, that your life gets better and that your relationships get better and that you can have that fairy tale that you want, that, that, that relationship that you see inside of your head that you are a little bit afraid that you can't have. Right, because you've been told for so long that, you know, love is hard and love is painful right. and love is tricky and, you it's know, not. the divorce rate is 50%. And, right, the, the odds know, are against the, you. The odds are against you and blah, 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 blah. Well, fuck well, that. Yeah. Seriously, you guys, there, that doesn't have to be your reality. That doesn't have to be the experience for you because when you start taking care of what's going on in here, all of this changes and it just can stay awesome. I mean, you're not going to go through your challenges, but your challenges... Right 
can be opportunities for growth and they don't have to destroy your marriage. They can yep. just build it and, 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 and keep it strong. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I love going through challenges with you. We actively look for them. We do. We, we act actively look for shit to go through together. <laughs> <laughs> we do. And it's a blast. And then our relationship comes out stronger. I'm telling like, you. Woo! Yeah. It's a rush. Like I, I, I love my wife more every single day. Like, we invent new ways to love each other. And I'm telling you, I want that for you too. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's great. It's, it's a really, really cool way to experience life mm -hmm. because you just have this person who's there with you, this partner who loves you and, and supports you and cheers you on and, yeah. you know, holds you and, and, and understands your needs. Like, holy shit, how many of us don't feel understood in our relationships? How many of us feel like we are not held and supported in the ways that we like? Mm -hmm. You know, it starts with us knowing what that stuff is and being able to safely communicate it with our partners. That's huge. It is. It is. So, send us a private message, me or her, doesn't matter. Send us a private message and we will get you all hooked up. That's what we got for this evening. Thanks so much for tuning in for 21 minutes. I, I, you have no idea how grateful we are that, that you listen to it for this long. And we are very grateful to be able to touch your life and to really spread this message around because it's worth sharing. So thank you. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> My favorite part. <laughs>